All right, some of you guys may know that I'm currently being sued by the largest crypto channel known as BitBoy Crypto for 75,000 or more dollars. A lot of you guys are probably very confused like I was, so I'll take you guys through the whole timeline. At some point in 2020, I stumbled across a video that BitBoy Crypto made about a token called PAMP token, where he advertised this token as something that could only go up in price. I left that video thinking, wow, this is really what the newcomers to crypto see considering he's one of the largest crypto channels. A couple weeks later, it came out that that project PAMP apparently rug pulled, leaving the investors with nothing. The token went basically to zero. I went back to that video and commented something around the lines of, wow, you're shady for this one. And I downloaded the video because I cover dumb stuff that happens on the internet. And when the largest crypto channel on YouTube promotes something that turned out to be a scam, that's something worth covering. So then some time went by and I completely forgot about this whole situation until BitBoy Crypto went on to Anthony Pompliano's podcast and argued with him, where BitBoy essentially claimed claimed something around the lines of he's never shilled coins before. So in November of 2021, which ironically was the top of crypto, I made a video on BitBoy. This video was titled, This YouTuber Scams His Fans, BitBoy Crypto. I used the term scam in my title because it was my honest opinion based on public information that it seemed dishonest for this guy who's a self-proclaimed cryptocurrency expert to promote something like he did this PAMP token. I also covered how he plagiarized another crypto journalist by the name of Vince. So what happened after that, about, I would say a month later, is some dude showed up to my house dressed up as a package delivery guy and he gave me a cease and desist. This happened back in December of 2021, so I was expecting a Christmas present instead. I didn't receive a present, to say the least. To put it lightly, that made my holiday a lot more stressful as that was the first time I vomited from stress. Zero out of 10 would not recommend. But I decided to try and make a video on this. And to spice things up, I went to Craigslist and looked for a violinist to play in the background while I was reading out the cease and desist. Serious, any defamatory? Yeah, looking back at that, I guess that was just a creative way to burn $100. But clearly, I don't want to be sued. So I decided to just ignore the cease and desist because it was outrageous. But I didn't want to talk about BitBoy Crypto for a little while. And almost eight months went by until I came home about 10 p.m. with a car parked outside of my house. Me and my girlfriend got out of the vehicle to start unloading groceries when suddenly this man started approaching us on my driveway. He then yelled if I was Arling, but he pronounced it wrong, so I assumed I was automatically a stranger, so I replied, I can't help you. He then said, take these papers or I'm coming back with the sheriff. So then I realized this is probably from BitBoy Crypto again, so I took the papers. So this time it was a lawsuit draft, so it still hadn't been filed at the time, which confused me again. But then, even more confusing, three days later, I received a package in the mail and I assumed this was the lawsuit. Instead, it was another lawsuit draft from BitBoy. So I couldn't really tell if he was trying to scare me or not because it seemed like a lot of the other creators who covered him promoted projects that turned out to be scams. Suddenly their videos were gone. BitBoy also seems to delete these videos when the projects lose money, it seems. Until the other night, because I was contacted by a bunch of journalists asking for a comment on a lawsuit that was officially filed with my name in it. Then tonight, I had this visitor at my door. How you doing today? Good. Are you early? Full name? Big, Big Shoal? Yeah. Who are you delivering for? I just, I just got some stuff for you. Oh, what is it? I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a box. I don't need it. Well, you've been served early. What are you doing? So yeah, I have officially been sued. This is horrifying. And I realize I'm sadly risking everything I've built over the last five years just to stand up for myself and make this video. But here are some key points from this lawsuit. Plaintiff Benjamin Armstrong, or BitBoy Crypto, hereby files this verified complaint against defendant Arling Mengsel Jr. or Atozi for defamation, defamation per se, intentional infliction of emotional distress, negligent infliction of emotional distress, torturous interference with business relations or potential business relations, violation of uniform Deceptive Practices Act and Violation of Fair Business Practices Act. Armstrong also seeks punitive damages and attorney's fees in support of his claims. Armstrong alleges the following. Plaintiff has a sole proprietor who operates under a well-known social media handle named BitBoy Crypto. Under this name, plaintiff disseminates valuable information via various social media platforms on the internet. Plaintiff's business model relies on his reputation and his status as an influencer who influences others' decisions such as to buy or sell cryptocurrency 
as investments. Defendant Mengsel is an online personality. He uses the social media handle name Atozi to post videos and tweets concerning the activities of individuals in various industries. Upon information and belief, one of Mengsel's strategies for gaining more notoriety is to launch caustic personal attacks on a variety of individuals for the entertainment value that his audience might find in such attacks. As a part of the strategy, Mengsel turned his sights on BitBoy Crypto. Mengsel made defamatory and damaging statements about Armstrong that were intended to harm Armstrong and his business. Plaintiff brings this action to recover damages for defendants' efforts to defame Armstrong and otherwise to diminish or interfere with his online business endeavors. The court has subject matter jurisdiction under because the matter in controversy exclusive of interests and costs exceeds the sum of $75,000 and diversity of citizenship exists. Factual allegations. A. BitBoy Crypto. BitBoy Crypto is an industry leading source of reliable commentary with respect to investments in cryptocurrency. Expert analysis and advice are useful to consumers in considering cryptocurrency investment decisions. Through BitBoy Crypto, Armstrong provides video commentary regarding cryptocurrency investments. B. Atozi accuses BitBoy Crypto of scamming his fans. On about November 8th, 2021, defendant Mengsel, under his DBA Atozi, posted a video on YouTube titled, This YouTuber Scams His Fans, BitBoy Crypto. Atozi's video concerns a BitBoy Crypto video regarding an investment in particular cryptocurrency called PAM. Atozi's video makes repeated attacks on Armstrong's honesty, credibility, and reliability. Atozi's video repeatedly calls Armstrong a dirtbag, stating that he is a shady dirtbag and a dirtbag YouTuber. Atozi Tozi's video claims that he will expose him as the dirtbag he is, and states several times that Armstrong is one of a group of dirtbag influencers. Atozi's video continues Atozi's dirtbag attack with this statement. So in case you didn't know what an absolute sleazy dirtbag of a YouTuber is, here's BitBoy Crypto. A prime example of that. On another occasion, Atozi's video states that this man, Armstrong, has enriched himself by being an all-around dirtbag. Atozi's video directly attacks Armstrong's livelihood, stating that when it comes to cryptocurrency advice, Armstrong is not someone you should be looking up to for any advice whatsoever. To drive in the point home, Atozi's video asks, how is this man a reputable source for crypto investment advice? The Atozi video answers its own rhetorical question, stating that Armstrong cannot be trusted with financial advice because you don't know whether he's trying to enrich you or himself. I'm not commenting on that, but here is a CNBC article where it says that Armstrong is one of the most watched crypto influencers on YouTube. His channel, BitBoy Crypto, has amassed more than 1.5 million subscribers. For years, Armstrong said that he accepted payments from crypto companies to tout their new products for his vast audience of subscribers. That's a practice where he says he now regrets because it led to some painful losses of his own viewers. In the fall of 2020, Armstrong announced his partnership with a cryptocurrency called DistX, calling it the most trusted coin. He said the whole idea of DistX was to stop scams in crypto, but Armstrong said in the end, the project itself ended up being a scam. The project team rug pulled, meaning they worked to increase the market cap and then disappeared, leaving investors holding the bag. The new coin is now down 99% valued at less than a penny. While he was accepting paid promotions, Armstrong said he previously made more than $30,000 in a single endorsement, which included is a promotional video for DistX and could easily make more than $100,000 per month in promotions alone. I'll just leave it at that. So going back to the lawsuit, another segment says, Atozi's video states that BitBoy Crypto is so deceptive and misleading to investors. I'm surprised it's even allowed on YouTube to begin with. Atozi's video also asserts that BitBoy Crypto's video is beyond misleading. The Atozi video adds to its claims of fraud and deceit, if not outright theft, with another baseless accusation that Armstrong will run afoul of the law, stating that it's basically inevitable the SCC is going to get involved because dirtbags like this, Armstrong, cannot resist the urge to take a quick buck and milk their audience for some extra money. Defendant's conduct was directed towards Armstrong and has caused Armstrong severe emotional distress. As a result of the defendant's outrageous statements, Armstrong now suffers from severe anxiety that he will be perceived as a felon, a fraud, and an untrustworthy in business or in general. Armstrong now has recurring bouts of depression 
speculation about whether a defendant's defamatory statements will harm Armstrong financially and socially, and whether he'll be able to recover his good reputation and business as a result. Contemplating the loss of his livelihood and his good standing in society has left Armstrong in a fragile emotional state with virtually no confidence that things will be better in the future. Plaintiff has sustained damages in excess of $75,000 as a direct and proximate result of Atosi's torturous conduct. I think it's insane that I'm being sued for expressing my own opinions. I thought I lived in America. Imagine how thin skin you have to be to do this. And from what I've heard, this isn't the first time he's filed a lawsuit like this. I'm going to be standing up for myself because I don't believe people should just be able to throw money at lawyers to make their shady actions go away. And I also don't think that people should be rewarded by filing outrageous lawsuits. Clearly, I don't have all the money to fight this lawsuit because I've been quoted from various lawyers that this could cost $50,000 to $500,000 just to defend myself. Clearly, this is a massive inconvenience. So if you guys do want to support me here, I will be linking a GoFundMe down below, a Bitcoin address, an Ethereum address in the description down below. If there's any leftover funds from this, I will be donating this to various charities because I have no intentions of profiting from raising money from you guys. And there's probably going to be a lot of scammers trying to impersonate these addresses, so please only send money to the addresses in the description of this video. And if you guys want to support me non-financially, you can do so by sharing this video or making memes about the whole situation. That alone helps more than you can imagine. And thank you guys so much for the support because I really need it at this point, and it's been rough. This whole situation's been unlike anything I've ever dealt with. But in the meantime, I'll be here. I'll be making content as usual, and I'll see you guys in the next video.